Hey everyone, Lucky Shot 13 here, and welcome back to another episode of Making Malaga. So as you can probably tell by my voice, I am feeling a little bit under the weather, but I still felt like getting an episode out today. So you'll see that the screens are moving and not necessarily in rhythm with me, and that means that yes, we have another post commentary. So you can see uh, going through the calendar right now, uh, the games that we played and simmed in our last episode. So I went ahead and pre-recorded a bunch of gameplay footage of me playing and going through everything, just because right now, for some reason, uh, the microphone that I'm using is having some compatibility problems with my PlayStation 4. So all in all, somewhere down the line, I'm probably going to have to invest in an actual capture card instead of just uh, basically using uh, PlayStation's built-in recording feature. Um, to get my gameplay footage, and then that will help me to uh, both integrate face cam and make sure that my microphone is working properly so that I don't necessarily have to do these post commentaries. Although, to be honest, I do enjoy post commentary. On the screen right now is uh, me going through the latest uh, scouting report, and looking through there, there was really only one player. Uh, Luis Martinez, that was worth our time. Um, haven't gotten off to the best start in terms of uh, uh, our youth scouting, but I mean, finding one guy who's worth it, I mean, that's something. Uh, so just taking a quick look at the lineup here, and this is pretty much my, my first choice 11 uh, whenever I was coming into this game. Uh, this had been the 11 that had really been performing well for me, uh, and so I decided... Uh, just to throw everything together and go for it in the Bilbao game. Uh, I was definitely playing for a result, not looking for a loss or draw. I wanted to win. Uh, checking out the lead table, we did sit in eighth. Pretty much everybody on six games, and we were there uh, with the league's tied for the league's best uh, defense. we just been having a little trouble scoring, but you can see that we're only a point behind Real Madrid after six games with nine points ourselves, Real Madrid on ten. So all things considered, we really were not far away from the top of the leaderboards. So I was really encouraged by that because I figured that that would give us a great opportunity with a win to potentially jump into those Europa League places, which before the season started was my personal goal for the season, was to get into the Europa League. So, like I said, coming into the game versus Bilbao, uh, you can see here real quickly the lineups and how the formations are, both uh, ourselves and uh, Athletic Bilbao. Um, and and like I said, coming into it, I wanted to be very, very positive with how we went out and played. I wanted to get out there straight from kickoff and just start taking it to Bilbao. Because I knew that if I sat back and invited pressure, that they have so many different creative and attacking options in the final third. Uh, that they were just going to blow me apart if I didn't uh, get onto the initiative, okay? So we take the ball from kickoff, and we come up here, and I wanted to take the initiative, but, I mean, pretty much three minutes in, Bilbao was, was coming forward. They had done a really good job of taking the ball off of me and getting in there, getting in there, getting in there. Then you can see here, first shot, and I thought, okay, this is exactly what I was talking about. This is exactly why I have to take the initiative. So just a couple minutes later, we come down here. I play this nice little ball into Paulson, and boom, he finishes it. Okay, and this is exactly why we went out and got him, as opposed to playing Sandro at strike or somebody else. Because you can see here, he gets it onto his left foot. He's not the strongest left-footed player. He's naturally right-footed, but it's his size, his strength, his dribbling, the way he's able to fight off one defender off balance and put it home left-footed between two defenders. So you can see here that then Bilbao gets a penalty kick off of us, and you'll see here, they got it from a corner, and this was actually their second corner in a row uh, in the 37th minute. And, I mean, look at this. Have you ever seen a softer corner in FIFA than that? I mean, that was ridiculous. That looked like a flop. But, of course, that's why we went out and got Donnarumma, okay? He's six foot five. he's athletic, he's the perfect kind of goalkeeper. We come up there, we save the penalty, they get a resulting corner kick from it. And here at this point, I'm thinking, okay, this is where they score. Because I went ahead and saved the penalty. But no, of course, we're able to clear it away. And that was that, alright? So, here we are. A ball in. It looks pretty innocent at this point until Paulson gets there and Hesio finds himself with some room. And Hesio puts it in the top left corner. 
I mean, really was was a go from nothing because I got forced backwards on the play, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm just going to lose out on this. This is going to be half time, and then the ball ends up with Polson and Hasio with a great run from midfield to be able to put that away. Then we make a couple of uh, substitutions here, uh, bringing on some pace uh, on the edge with Bailey for Sandro since Bailey just friggin' flies. Uh, and then I come in and I bring in a guy uh, like Villanueva. We just needed someone who was fresh on defense uh, to go ahead. And plus he has that low attacking work rate, high defensive, so I knew he was just going to sit back. And at this point, a 2-0 lead versus Bilbao. The 2-0 lead is the worst you can have, and I was really looking to protect it. So then right here you can see I completely botched the free kick. I mean, they get it. It's back to Inaki Williams. Inaki Williams has been killing me all day, and he puts it just over the post. But then right off of that, here we go. We get the ball. It gets down to Bailey. Bailey into Paulson, and look at this. Look at this run by Kiko. Wide open, into space, on his right foot. Boom. Puts the game away. 85th minute, I think. 86th minute. And, uh, yeah, he just puts that baby away. It, it was it was done. I mean, just look at this. What a great ball by Paulson. He'd just been absolutely on top of everything. And Kiko with a great, great finish. And that is exactly how the game would end. 3 to nothing to us, Malaga. A very, very nice result for us to make sure that we're getting maximum points from these games. Uh, you can see Kiko. He had one shot, one goal. Definitely a great performance from him. Goals by Kiko, Hasio, and Polson with Polson having two assists, if I'm not mistaken. He he assisted on both goals. And of course, I went real quick just to uh, take a look at the stats. We got out possessed a little bit, uh, but Polson was also man of the match. So we head into the next game versus Alavesh. And you can see by a quick look at the table that after seven games, we are on 12 points. Just one point outside of the Europa League places. But we have a game in hand on Sociedad and Espanyol, who are both on 14 points and ahead of us. So I knew that going into the Alavis game, that if we picked up three points, we would, for sure, guaranteed with those matches already played in front of us, climb into a Europa League place. And that is exactly what we're aiming for this season. Just because is what it will also do for us is match a long-term goal for the club uh, that we've been given as part of our manager objectives. And again, I'm kind of accepting at this point, looking at it, that we're probably not going to meet the goal that is to reduce wages. So I figured that anything else that we could do, not just for personal goals, but for the board as well, uh, to overcome those challenges was definitely going to help us out in the future. So again, we get everything picked out, sorted out. We pretty much get to play our first choice starting 11 versus Alavish. And again, I wanted to take the initiative and get onto the ball and start scoring some more goals. So I definitely felt like I had set up the team to do so, uh, that I had gotten the players that I needed to get uh, in order to do that. So we jump right in right here. We get on the ball, we get Paulson on it, okay, he's on the wings, we're just trying to get the ball back into the center, we do so, okay, and then we get it right here, and you can see not a bad little effort to start the game, but again, this shows what I wanted to do in the game, which was to come out towards Alavesh, get, and just get on it, I mean, look at that shot from distance right there, I mean, it's a foggy game, you know, there's no way that the goalkeeper can see that great, and I'm just taking long shots, taking long shots. I'm taking any shot that I can get. If I get in an area, I definitely want to take a shot. But you can see that we go into halftime, and, you know, it's nil-nil. That was it. I mean, those were pretty much the only highlights that happened was me having a couple shots. So here we go in the second half. Okay, we get the ball right here. A really, really nice play from Kiko. He comes back inside. He's looking for somebody. It's Paulson. Of course it's Paulson. I mean, who else would it be? I mean, Paulson on an absolute tear, he's scoring, he's assisting, and like I said, he was exactly the type of striker that I wanted to bring in. Now, I remember when I didn't bring him in, I was a little disappointed that in the most recent update, they had dropped him from four-star skill moves to three, but you can see here, look at this, just slices right through the ball, a little bit of movement, puts it under and away from the keeper, and absolutely no way for the goalie to stop that one. So now here, Alavis come with a little bit of pressure on us, and you can see that we concede the free kick. 
Uh, and picked up a yellow card for our troubles. Uh, Luis Hernandez, though, had been uh, playing extremely well, I thought. Uh, Luis Hernandez has, has really turned out to be quite a solid center back for me, and I was actually a little bit worried about him at the start of the season just because I really, I'd never used him before. Um, and I was really kind of nervous about how, how he would play. Um, but the, the pairing of him and Diop has been really, really solid. Uh, so, of course, I make a couple of substitutions again to bring on some attacking players. Because, like I said, I'm going for the result here. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely trying to get the win. Uh, and then, of course, the resulting kick does absolutely nothing. But then Alves, again, on the attack, gets it in. Donnarumma with the save. And we do a really nice job here of just getting the ball away. And then all of a sudden I look up and I'm like, okay, Philippe, that's our sub. He's on. He's got fresh legs. We're going to go ahead and get it in the pulse. And now here's where I make my mistake. I get it to Sandro and I shoot way too early. I mean, I force a really, really great save out of the keeper. I mean, it was a wonderful long shot effort from Sandro, but I really could have taken more of a touch or come back inside onto his right foot and tried to put that into a top corner. But a really nice effort there from Sandro, at least to a corner which doesn't lead to anything, pretty much at all. We do get another corner into stoppage time, and of course, all I'm thinking about is waiting the game out, waiting the game out. Quick little shot, nothing coming, and then that pretty much ends the game right there. Uh, they do get a chance to kick it away, but they don't get a chance to move the ball once it's upfield. And that's another three points. So we started off and it looked like we were going to get a lot of draws, that we were going to have trouble getting goals. Look, the only way we were going to get points is from nil-nil draws and finish the season with 38 points from 38 matches. But another good win for us there. And you can see again that Paulson was man of the match. So we do a quick check of the table and we see ourselves climb into fourth position with everybody around us having played eight games so we're sitting there on 15 points in fourth place and i'm feeling really really good about ourselves now at this point we are in a play to uh sim one so we were going to sim the game versus Laganas. we take a quick look at our goals uh, youth development not really progressing again we really haven't gotten much coming into the academy so that's definitely something that we're looking at down the road is to get better players in so that we can develop them and hit our youth goals we take a look at the financial goal, and we just know that we're not going to hit it, unfortunately. So I do decide that going into the uh, Laganas game that I probably should make uh, a couple of substitutions uh, just to try and get uh, some different people into the lineup. I mean, again, it is a sim game. Villanova's rated a point higher than Diab. I figured that would be worth it to go ahead and bring him in uh, and get him some playing time since he is actually a player that we are trying to hold on to. Uh, he's definitely not a guy that I'm looking to let go. I think he has decent potential. Uh, low high on the work rates for defender is exactly what I want. Um, but again, I just felt like maybe we needed a slight change in the lineup, bringing him in to give him some playing time uh, before we went into the game versus Laganas. Just because it was a home game, um, and I really felt good simming the game at home. So here we go, getting it all kicked off. You can see our lineup there. You're going to see who Laganas is going to play against us. Uh, I just let the full thing sim. Uh, I didn't skip through it. Um, you can see that we get an early goal from Kiko in the second mini. And Kiko has been a very, very valuable player for us, even after I went out and got Pudence and thought we might drop him. Um, so then you can see there that uh, Guerrero gets a point. Uh, a point. <laughs> gets a goal back for Laganis. Um, and then we just keep chugging along, chugging along. Some yellow cards getting handed out. And Kiko again with the brace. And that would be the deciding goal. So a 2-1 win versus Lagana. So we come into this episode sitting outside the Europa League places and get three straight wins, two playing the games, one simming them. And suddenly our Malaga team looks like a real contender, not just for the Europa League, but for a top four finish. And looking at the squad when we came in and looking at the quality of player that I knew I was going to be able to bring in, I certainly didn't think that a top four finish would be on the cards for us. Like I said, I felt like my Europa League goal uh, was very realistic, was very doable, and was probably at the top end of what I felt like our club could do this season. You did, you can see that we did get an email from Ricardo Orta uh, that he is homesick, 
which of course means that he will not go back to Portugal. He will probably still go somewhere in Spain. He just doesn't want to be at our club anymore. I wish it would just say that unless it is going to send them back to the country that they are from. So, in the next episode, we have matches versus Levante, Atletico Madrid, Guion, and Barcelona, so the schedule is definitely starting to pick up. I do hope that y'all enjoyed this episode and understand why I am having to do these post-commentaries, uh, but yeah. So, until next time, this has been Lucky Shot 13 and I will see y'all later.